Our guest today is Brad Rubin. He has been a professor in the graduate programs in software department in the School of Engineering at the University of St. Thomas for the past 13 years. He is also director of the Center of Excellence for Big Data and teaches a course in Big Data Architecture along with courses in Computer Security and Scala. He co-leads the Twin Cities Spark and Hadoop Wizard Group. Previously, he spent most of his industry career at IBM in Rochester, Minnesota. Brad has degrees in computer and electrical engineering from the University of Illinois, Urbana, and, uh, and a doctorate in computer science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I am your host, Rajiv, and welcome to our show, Brad. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. You are one of the organizers of TC Spark and Hadoop Wizard Group. What motivated you to start it? When did it start? And can you tell us some uh, background history of it? Sure. Well, it's uh, early days go back to uh, 2011 when uh, Brock Nolan, Brock was a uh, employee of Cloudera. At the time, uh, he's now chief architect at a uh, big data consulting company in the Twin Cities called PH Data. Mm-hmm. He uh, uh, was starting to collect interest in people understanding uh, who wanted to understand Hadoop a little better. And that's actually where I first learned how, uh, about Hadoop. It was actually Brock speaking at a a Java user group meeting in the Twin Cities that got me interested in the Hadoop technology. So Brock had been running uh, the meetings initially, and then I joined uh, him to co-organize it with him and bring it to University of St. Thomas. And then shortly after, Ryan Bossart, who uh, was also at Cloudera at the time, who's now um, VP of Services for for PH Data, joined in. So the three of us have have run it uh, ever since for about the past six years. Great. Um, I believe his brother is Mac Nolan, right? Right. Brock and Mac uh, okay. run, run PH Data. Okay. When I did, did my project at Boston Scientific, uh, I worked with his team. They're the one who built our enterprise data hub. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yes. It's a small world. Yep. Uh, in your role as a director of uh, Center of Excellence for Big Data at the University of St. Thomas, uh, how do you make sure your program is program is actually relevant to the industry need and like when I was a computer science student in early 2000 I know I noticed like at that time computer science usually uh, lagged behind the industry trend do you find your program having similar struggle uh, what is your uh, take on that so our, our graduate programs in software department uh, actually before I was there always had a reputation for staying in close contact with industry uh, almost all the full-time professors have industry experience, uh, and we have a, a healthy um, supply of adjunct faculty to to keep current as well. And we've always focused on uh, on this this balance between uh, theory and practice. So uh, it, it was something I believed in, something that was in place when I joined graduate programs in software or GPS, and uh, something that I've I've worked with the team to maintain ever since. So we do that through a number of mechanisms. We clearly get feedback from students, many of whom are already employed in industry, and uh, we have a, an advisory board, an external advisory board, of um, of uh, CTOs and CIOs in the community. Uh, we do presentations like our Twin City Hadoop user group where we get feedback. Uh, so through all those mechanisms, uh, collaboration on projects with companies, we we stay abreast of the field. Wonderful. When it comes to your actual curriculum, like uh, is your uh, curriculum like uh, technology agnostic? Do you teach your student the foundation? Uh, the reason I'm asked is, is like, do you like uh, utilize uh, both open source framework and commercial framework to teach your students on uh, what to go about uh, uh, implementing big data solutions we do uh, we we have mixtures of both and and some uh, some of those choices de- depend on on uh, specific faculty members and their preferences uh, I happen to be a big believer in open source uh, primarily because I really encourage my students to work outside of the classroom on other projects and having access to uh, free software is a big boon uh, to that on the other hand uh, in industry sometimes you see non open source tools so if you look across our curriculum, you'll find uh, Hadoop uh, and uh, its ecosystem. Uh, you'll find uh, languages like Java and Python and R. And you'll uh, also find some proprietary tools, things like MATLAB, SAP HANA, and uh, Oracle uh, databases. So it's, it's really a mixture in the program. Nice. Uh, now, I'm curious, like, how many... Um, uh, Students have graduated from your big data and data science program. 
Uh, so we have uh, quite an array. I, I don't have an exact count, but uh, clearly in the uh, in the hundreds at this point. Uh, we've been um, offering a certificate in big data uh, for about five years now, and uh, we we've offered a master's degree in data science to go lo to go along with our other uh, three degrees. Uh, we also, in addition to the master's of science in, in data science, we have uh, degrees in software engineering, software management, and IT. And uh, we just uh, had the data science degree eclipse our flagship software engineering degree in terms of enrollment. So they're about neck and neck uh, right now. We have several hundred uh, data scientists enrolled, and, and we have a lot of people come to our program for the four-course certificate in, in big data to get kind of a taste of the field. Uh, some leave it at that, and some go on to pursue a full master's degree. Nice. Uh, now, how, how can you tell us uh, more details about the data science certificate program versus the data science actually master's of science program? Uh, how many courses, uh, more or less, do you have to take for those? Sure. So for our master's in data science, it's 12 courses. Each course uh, consists of uh, one, one night a week. So uh, Monday through Friday, one of those nights would be dedicated to the course from 5.45 to, to 9 p.m., uh, there are some uh, Saturday course offerings as well uh, that, that might occur in the program. Uh, so uh, normally that takes students uh, probably a minimum of two years, more typically three years to, uh, to complete. Uh, but we found that some students might already have a master's degree or might not be ready to sign up for the full master's curriculum of 12 courses in data science. So one nice option is to choose a four-course program uh, for a certificate in big data, and then many go on to apply those four courses to the the twelve course master's degree. Super awesome. Now, what do you think uh, the trend will be in academia uh, and the industry? Well, now, the big data space is really hot right now. Um, there are a lot of opportunities, not only dealing with big data and the technologies that you need to go beyond the traditional rela relational databases or even Excel spreadsheet solutions to deal with uh, large amounts of data, data that's flooding in very quickly or comes in um, in a diverse format. Uh, so there's continuing opportunity there. I, th I think one of the most exciting areas is to the blending of big data and data science, which are uh, could be viewed separately, but that intersection is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And at that intersection, you find applications in machine learning and artificial intelligence that rely on actually simpler algorithms that take advantage of just an abundance amount of data to do some of the amazing things that we see, things like self-driving cars and, and so on. Let's jump back back to your uh, uh, Spark and Hadoop Wizard group. Which uh, presentations uh, have been the most interesting uh, that have gotten good feedback from your uh, user base? Well, one of the things we uh, really try hard to maintain is uh, a focus on education. So we're, we're coming close to 2,000 members. And the last thing an engineering audience wants is to sit and be sold in a, in a sales presentation. Uh, but what they really want is to be educated on some new area, uh, some new exploration. And so we've really tried hard to, to make sure that people come to our meetings, come away having learned something new. And uh, we, we've had quite uh, a diverse uh, body of presenters. Probably our biggest attended meeting was uh, Doug Cutting, the creator of Hadoop, mm -hmm. uh, came by last year. And we had our largest uh, crowd ever, people interested uh, not only in hearing about Hadoop from Doug, but uh, also f uh, to hear about his views and experience with open source more generally. Uh, we've had uh, Tom White came from Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, Tom wrote uh, the most popular O'Reilly book on, on Hadoop. Uh, he came to present. We've had wow. uh, use cases and applications. And every once in a while, uh, we, we one of us uh, organizers will present. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I gave a presentation on the intersection between the Internet of Things and Hadoop. Um, and uh, there, there was a lot of interesting discussion afterwards, getting those co two communities together. Uh, so we, we meet every two months, and, and really we've had quite a range of, of presentation and very good feedback on all aspects. Nice. Uh, well, uh, that's about all the questions I had for today. Is there anything else uh, would you like to talk about, any other topic in Big Data World? No, really just to mention that uh, Tw Twin Cities is a wonderful place for big data and data science. Uh, there are so many uh, people 
that form a great community, uh, so many educational opportunities, so many companies in, in, a, in a diverse set of industries. So uh, a lot of times you, you hear about East Coast or West Coast in big data and data science, and uh, we have really a vibrant community in the Twin Cities, so we should, we should all be proud of. Great. Uh, now, is there in somewhere uh, people, can, people can connect with you, either Twitter or social media, and, or is there, and what, what else can they find out about your uh, TC Spark and Hadoop user group? Uh, so if uh, m people go to meetup.com, the meetup site, and they search for uh, TCSHUG, so that stands for Twin City Spark Hadoop User Group. Uh, they're welcome to sign up for that user group. You'll get uh, notices approximately every two months. They're always held on the University of St. Thomas, St. Paul campus. We're fortunate that we've always had sponsors who pay for uh, pizza and pop for free for the attendees. Uh, so that's one connection point. To learn more about our programs at St. Thomas, the easiest way is to go to uh, www.stthomas.edu slash software, and that will get to our graduate programs in software with our big data and data science programs. And people uh, should feel free to contact me directly as well. My email address is b-s-r-u-b-i-n at stthomas.edu. Great, wonderful. Uh, thank you, Brad. Uh, thank you for being our guest today. Uh, you have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Rajiv. Thanks for having me. Yep, thank you.